We begin tonight with 10 News anchors John Carlin and Lindsay Ward, who are live in the Grandin area with more on this manhunt that is still underway. Lindsay and John. We are live tonight. We're in the parking lot of St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church. That's where the, the man's RV was found very early this morning. Just to set the stage for you, just briefly, that RV is roughly behind us. You see some state police vehicles off to uh, my left is a tow truck that they've told us they'll use to tow that RV away sometime later on tonight. And this has been an active search throughout the day, and it all began on Saturday in Franklin County, where deputies say Michael Brown killed his mother's boyfriend, Rodney Brown, at his home and Hardy. And yesterday we learned the 22 year old's car was located in Clarendon County, South Carolina. And then this morning he was spotted on Tillett Road in Roanoke, where police say he was tapping on his grandmother's window. And then moments later, police found that RV that we just told you about. Investigators say they don't know where he is, adding this is like he's likely on the move and is not afraid to change his appearance. Now, 10 News reporter Arisha Jones kicks off our team coverage tonight. She's joining us now live from the Grandin Road Village area with more on what police are saying about this suspect. Irisha. There's been two news conferences today involving multiple agencies. And what we did learn today that Brown's grandmother lives on Tillett Road, which has been much of the focus for the search today. Now, a vehicle he was believed to be driving was found inside a trailer in Clarendon County, South Carolina last night. Then this morning, there were reports that he was spotted on Tillett Road. The search for Brown prompted authorities to place the area within a half mile radius of Patrick Henry, a high school under a shelter in place. City schools were also canceled as a precaution throughout today. There were reports of sightings, but nothing confirmed. Authorities believe Brown is looking for alternative forms of transportation and may be armed with high powered weapons. And we have an individual who is wanted uh, both locally and federally for crimes against another person. Uh, we have reason to believe that he may continue to be armed and dangerous. And if he is confronted or pushed into a, a position to where he feels like he has no other alternative, then he may use force. Most of the search for Brown right now is still around the Grandin Row area in Patrick Henry High School. But law enforcement is stationed throughout the area. Now the FBI, the ATF, U.S. Marshals Service, and the Franklin County Sheriff's Office is also involved with the search and the investigation. Of course, we will continue to update you on this story. Live in Rono, Arisha Jones, 10 News, working for you. All right, thank you, Irish. And of course, this manhunt started before sunrise this morning in a southwest Roanoke neighborhood. That's when authorities say Brown was tapping on his grandmother's window. And that's where we find Lindsay Kennett live this evening. She's joining us now live from that neighborhood, and she's been talking with neighbors all evening. So, Lindsay, what did they have to say about all this chaos? They say they're still shaken up and feeling uneasy, knowing that Brown is still on the loose. Police were stationed all over this neighborhood, especially here along Tillett Road. They were stopping cars, checking neighbors' homes and backyards. Just before noon, police blocked off Tillett Road and told neighbors to go in their homes and take shelter in their basements. Our crews were there as a helicopter started circling overhead and armored vehicles drove down Tillett, which is where neighbors say one of Brown's relatives lives. Other neighbors say they saw SWAT officers knock on someone's home. A woman answered. The officers reportedly searched inside, and when they got back out, that's when all the police left the area. With the sun setting and no new leads on where Brown might be, this manhunt is leaving folks here terrified. I, it was a kind of a shock. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely a shock. That it was right next to Spring Street, and I went, oh my gosh, that's right next to my house. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been, I've been a little freaked out this morning because that's, that was super close. Neighbors say all they can do now is wait, be on the lookout, and lock their doors. Live in Roanoke, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you.
All right, thank you, Lindsay. Meanwhile, 10 News was the first on this scene as law enforcement began investigating the RV they believe belonged to Michael Brown. 10 News reporter Coulter Anstad has been there since early this morning, bringing you updates from that the site of that RV with it in the background. And Coulter, uh, I understand that uh, state police are now telling you they think that RV may have been there for 24 hours before they found it? Well, John, uh a church member I spoke to today said another church member uh, noticed the RV around 10 o'clock yesterday morning. And when the church member I spoke to today came to the church today to uh, do some maintenance, the RV was still here, but it was not intact. Take a look. This is what the RV looked like when we pulled up this morning. The entire passenger side of the RV appears to have been sheared off. How that happened is still unclear. As we've reported, this is the vehicle authorities believe Brown used to pull a trailer down to South Carolina. That trailer was found on the side of a road last night and inside was the vehicle Brown is believed to have been using. I was quite surprised. I was glad that I didn't go over there and bang on the door and, and try and open the door last night. So he might have been inside, but I don't think he was because we had so many people here uh, last evening. Coming up tonight on 10 News at 530, I'll have reaction from a man who lives near the church. For now, though, live in Roanoke, Coulter and staff, 10 News, working for you. Very good. Thank you, Coulter. And tonight we're hearing from a prominent Roanoke attorney who has a plea for Brown to turn himself in. Now, Brown's friends and family are worried about him being on the run and everyone's safety. That's why they hired Deborah Caldwell Bono to be his lawyer. Caldwell Bono says she's been in touch with those friends for a few days now. She officially joined the case this morning after the manhunt moved back to Roanoke. Now, we brought it first to you live right here on 10 News this afternoon that she He's asking him to surrender. He has a very strong support system in the area. People who love him, who've known him for years and always been there for him, and they are still with him, and they want him to know that. And if he will please turn himself in, contact me, I'll be there with him. He knows who these people are who've always been there for him. Cola Bono says she's never been contacted like this for a case, but she is happy to help out in any way she can. And again, her plea is for Brown to turn himself in, and she will see that things end safely for him.